Is it oh. connecting? Right. So good morning, uh, Cindy. Thank you for joining us today. Um, very glad to have you. It's been a, a, a long journey to get here, eventually to talk to each other. Um, so for the rest of the team, uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, this will be the, our last Talent Cafe for the year. Very excited. It's really built a lot of momentum um, this year in terms of, of getting speakers in and bringing the HR community and Namibia together to, to learn and to share uh, information, uh, HR related information. So today we have Cindy, I'm not going to try to pronounce your surname, or let me do it anyway. Go on. Vivasage. <laughs> yes. For the South Africans, we say Pavasic because they 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 can't get it. Pavasic. Pavasic. Like we say for, to them Pavasic, but you right. are correct. <laughs> Thank you. So today is about creating awareness, responsibility, and to encourage conversations around HIV and H. Uh, the importance of these conversations is in part to normalize HIV which obviously is something that is prevalent in our society, both in South Africa and in Namibia. Um, so we want to allow the HIV positive person to feel at ease uh, among all the other dilemmas that are going on. Uh, consequently, creating a safe environment where they can live openly with the HIV status, ensuring respect, and for them also to have access to healthcare, which has been highlighted obviously with the whole COVID-19 pandem pandemic um, Cindy is an expert in this particular area um, because she has survived all of these challenges of HIV and AIDS um, and of course all of the numerous health related issues that come with it. Um, so she's proof that a person can thrive after almost any finding, whether that's HIV positive or COVID positive. <laughs> I don't want to align the two. Um, <laughs> Cindy is a speaker, she's a trainer, she's a coach, she's an author, um, and her mission is to realign the mindset that people have in terms of tolerance um, and the acceptance of people living with HIV. So with that, I'd like to welcome Cindy, and again, to thank you for joining us today and to share your insights on this very important topic. Thank you very much, Kun, and um, hello, everybody else. I see you all muted, um, but... I just want to say up front, you are more than welcome to ask any questions and beware what you ask because I do answer them. So feel free to <laughs> ask me anything. <laughs> I, I don't want to make this too um, serious a, 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 a chat. I would I'd say a presentation, but um, feel free to ask questions as we go along because you're going to forget if you do want to write it in the um, question box, please feel free to do that. And Kun will just remind me that there are messages out there for me to respond to. But um, yes. yeah, thank you. It's, it's, I, I have, do have a presentation, but I don't want to get too, too morbid, especially now towards the end, end of the year. So uh, as you can see, I don't have a morbid um, cell in my body. It's only HIV <laughs> cells that I have in my body. So um, let's get ahead. Yeah, I've got a presentation that I'd like to share with you. Um, let's see, where are we? Uh, share screen. There we go. Okay. There we go. Great. You can see. Thank you. Okay, yes. cool. Let me just open this thing properly. Okay, there we go. Um, just some of the topics we're going to address is um, HIV and what is your responsibility? HIV statistics, Nam Namibia versus the world. I, I have also um, posted some um, South African stats into this, just so you can get an idea of what the situation is here, which is quite dire still. Mm. And then living positively with HIV and AIDS, just letting you know that it's not the end of the world, not a total nightmare. And then just a little bit on testing, treatment and management. And um, I do have questions and answers at the end, but you feel free to ask as we go along. There's not a hundred of you. So um, it can, we can just cut in and answer your questions if you have them. Brilliant, thank you. Um, my finger is a bit thinner. And I talk about Afrikaans, so if you want to ask in Afrikaans, is it also right? I'm going to start. 
firstly, the responsibility of your health, not just HIV, starts with you. It's not anybody else's um, problem to look after you. People living with HIV, for instance, can live a full and healthy life. And I know one of the questions is going to be, how old am I? I dare one of you to ask me because um, yes, I was infected quite a number of years ago and um, I, I am still living a very active and healthy life. It doesn't, being HIV positive doesn't mean you have to stop having sex. You can still have children. You can go out and work. You can play sport. I mean, all these contact sports now as well and I'll get you know, explain to you further along why contact sports is also a thing now, which it wasn't a, a couple of years back. And you are able to make plans for your future. There's no reason why you shouldn't. I'm still planning, even though I'm of an age. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. um, when people have a HIV, they have to make a lot of choices. They have to accept some responsibility to pre protect their own health. And more especially, to protect the health of other people. Not knowing your status is not an excuse. Mm. Everybody should test at least once a year if they are sexually active. There is no reason why you should not test. Um, it's not as scary as you think. Um, I mm. think the COVID test at this stage is even more scary than what the, what the HIV test <laughs> is. So yeah, just do it. You won't be sorry, but not knowing is not going to make you, uh, it's not going to make the HIV go away. So um, find mm. out find out. Um, people tend to label us. Now, you always hear the S word, stigma. I try not to use it. I'll use it in this context because it is a presentation and I, I need to explain why I don't use it. I prefer to use discrimination. Stigma um, is, is, has become such a nasty little word that um, it, it's got such a negative connotation and I prefer not to be negative, <laughs> pun, pun intended. But um, when, when it comes to, to the word stigma, the worst perpetrators of, the, of using that word is people that are HIV positive themselves because they say, oh, I'm stigmatized. Oh, there's a stigma. Oh, stigma and, and discrimination. And we keep using that word we are perpetuating the fact that there is a stigma attached to it. Yes, we know there is one, but try to avoid using that neg those negative terms, rather being uh, using the word discrimination. Don't make us hide. I hid for a number of years. And just because of the perception that I was going to be rejected, and that's how other people feel as well. Can you imagine somebody that with a lesser out in your face attitude personality can you imagine how difficult it must be for them i found it difficult so can you imagine what stress and 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 uh, anxious anxiety people are going through that cannot disclose their status just mm. be normal with people out there just even if you suspect because people do suspect trust me they do suspect more people know about an hiv status than you, a person even knows i mean i yeah. i found out later that four people knew my hiv status before I'd even disclosed my status. So yeah, um, get yourself educated. Know how transmission happens. You won't get it from a toilet seat. You won't get it from kissing. In fact, nowadays you won't even get it. And I'll explain that a little while, while later. There are so many myths around um, how you get HIV and they're still out there. It's scary. Mm. Being scared, there is no reason to be afraid. Find out the facts and be compassionate. Try to be empathetic. I mean, I know it's difficult. People are quick are quick to judge. And, they, and don't tell me you don't judge. We all judge to some degree. So think about how you would feel if you were in a serious health state. If you recall, um, some of you might even know far back. I don't know how all the other people on the, on the um, call are. But way back when, when cancer was a, a thing, people used to whisper, cancer, she's got cancer. They used to talk about the big C. Now mm. they're doing the same with HIV. Why? What makes it any different? Yeah. What makes it any different? The fact, yes, that it is sexually transmitted amongst other things does make it a little bit different, but it's not. It's still a, it's still a dis-ease. Yeah. And keep in mind, there are ups and downs with somebody that is HIV, HIV um, positive. 
try to be flexible with this situation, especially when it comes to um, employees, when the HR management is concerned. Be flexible because they do have rights and they are scared to disclose their status. Mostly um, HR managers are the first, well, second line, except for the nurse on site, um, that knows the HR person is the next person to know. Be flexible mm. and understand the nature of that person's condition. Ask them how they feel. They want to talk to you. They need somebody to talk to. Yeah. Offer that, basically offer that support. It's not only that HIV person that is that needs that support. There are families of HIV people. They might not be within your company, but they might have people within their household that is HIV positive and they are negative, but they need that support. They still mm. need that support because it's extremely hard to cope um, with somebody that is ill in any form um, in the family structure. Try to accept people like everyone else. I am who I am. I just want to be accepted for who I am, not what I have. Mm. It's actually quite easy. I'm just human like the rest of you. <laughs> I mean, like subhuman maybe sometimes, but hey, I'm human. <laughs> <laughs> We, we people are under the impression that um, we've got it under control, the epidemic, pandemic. We, we haven't. The amount of deaths is two people dying of AIDS related, HIV related diseases every minute in the world. Sure. The infections, there are three people infected every minute. That's equivalent to 1.8 million people globally. Think about that. What's, what's your, you, you 2 million, 2 point something million people in, in Namibia. Yeah. That's kind of scary. Yeah. It's, a, it's an entire continent. Mm. Uh -uh. That's kind of scary. That should scare everybody. Now, if you look at the worldwide totals, I, I just want to give you a a perspective of what what is out there and what the what what we're actually having to deal with and why we should be addressing this and having conversations about it more often with people that are HIV positive because we actually look after ourselves because nobody else is really look, looking quite looking after us the way we are able to do mm -hmm. so because we research we make a, we we educate ourselves because we need to know um, because we can't be going asking the doctor and the clinic and whoever else consistent uh, constantly we need to know what is currently happening in the world of hiv and there's a lot happening there's a lot of new stuff going on people that have been infected with hiv since the epidemic started i don't see um would you like to wave in there with a guess kun worldwide how many how many people 100 million <laughs> Close enough. 76 Close. million. 76 million. Okay. It's not unreal. It's not unreal. And the, the amount of people that have died from AIDS-related illnesses since the start of the epidemic is 32.7 million. Namibia, there are 220,000 people HIV positive. Oh. That's, a, that's a lot for that size community population. That's almost 10% of our people. Yeah. Well, South Africa is, I think, 28%, if I'm not mistaken. Wow. Southern Africa is the home of the largest epidemic. Mm. I mean, you're just looking here at um, some of the, the stats. I put them out for you. I had a look on the, um, which website? UNAIDS. Um, and who? I picked up these stats for you. People living mm. with HIV, you can see there, 220,000 new infections. 6,900 6, age-related deaths. This is in 2019, eh? Mm. 3,000 adults and ARV, 178,000. That's pretty good um, with the amount of people that are living with HIV in Namibia. And new mm. infections averted is 2,100. That's pretty good. But look, you go across this the side and you have a look at South, uh, South Africa. People living with HIV, 7.7 .7 million new infections is the amount of people in Namibia that are living with HIV. Mm -hmm. That's, that, that is like, wow. Significant. Exactly. Age related death, 72,000 in a year. What, what are we, 59 million people. Mm. Namibia is two and, a half, uh, two and a half million. 
So yeah, adults on ARV, 5,200,000. New infections that are averted. Look at those maternity figures. I mean, if those are averted, 65,000. Wow. Yeah, I mean, sure. what, what are these people doing? What are they doing? Why are they not taking better care? Because they're not using people like myself to speak to people about it. People, because people don't think it's real. They really don't. Mm -hmm. they, they just continue um, doing what they do without a second thought. Unfortunately, we in South Africa, I don't know if you've got the problem. We in South Africa have the problem of grants to um, people living, uh, pregnancies, mater maternity grants. And mm. I mean, that's how people survive. And it, it is understandable because of the culture and the situation we're in and the lack yeah. of, um, of um, finances and what have you, but um, more education has to be put out there. And then, yeah. as I was saying earlier, with with um, not being able to transmit the, the um, virus, I don't know if anybody's heard of U equals U, that is undetectable, equals untransmittable. If your virus is under 40 copies of milliliters in the blood and you've been on medication for at least six months, you cannot infect anybody else. Sure. Yes. I cannot infect anybody. Not through spittle, kissing, sexual contact. I cannot infect any. Obviously, I'm a little bit more... Um, I come from, from the old school still, so I would not even um, put myself in yeah. a position to infect anybody. I would still take precautions. However, what when people think that it's untransmittable, they think, oh, I don't have to use a protection. I don't have to use a condom. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is you can still get other um, STIs. So yes, you do still have to use a condom. But the fact is you can be a little bit more relaxed about um, being in a relationship and having children and playing sport without um, infecting anybody uh, else. So that, uh, that to me is such a huge plus point. And I don't know, I, I, I haven't got a, a screen for that, but there's also PrEP is available, which is uh, uh, PEP, post uh, PrEP. My head's dizzy, it's Friday. PrEP, pre-exposure prophylactics, which um, the is available in South Africa. I'm not sure about Namibia which is given to high risk um, individuals and it is available to anybody that does want to go on it. It is like a, um, a pull, like a pregnancy yeah. pull. You can't get pregnant, you cannot transmit that. And that is especially within our a gay and um, sex worker industry that it is more available to here. Yeah. So, but it's um, an interesting thing that you said there because I think we find that across the board, you know, people take antibiotics and as soon as they feel better, they stop, you know, um, and the same with mental health. They are, obviously, which is now my, my field, you know, people take medicine for depression or whatever, yeah. and the moment they feel better, they stop taking the medication, yeah. not knowing that the medication is what keeps them feeling better, you know, so it's, it's, a, yeah. it's, a, it's an interesting um, phenomenon in, in human behavior, I think, in general. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it is it is a thing. And I mean, I have known of many people that have gone off their medication, their ARVs, because they felt better. Yeah. And then they then they become immune to, immune to the medication. Um, um, so they no other medication will work for them. So not yeah. immune, wow. that wasn't the word. That wasn't the word I was looking for, but you know what I mean. Uh, the resistant or tolerant. Resistant, yeah. Sorry, yeah. that's the word, yeah. They become resistant to the medication. And sure. um, that, that's it, tickets, totally yeah. tickets. Okay, this is a true story. I swear. I've been <laughs> living, <laughs> I can't even tell about it. Um, <laughs> I have been living HIV positive for 16 years. My virus's birthday is on the 11th of November. That was the day I was diagnosed. So I celebrate that every year. Um, quite wildly every year I have a, a theme whether it's 13 you turned a teenager whether it's 14 I used a <laughs> valentine I wrote it a valentine's letter 15 I can't for the life of me remember and 16 this year was sweet 16 so every year I try to put a theme to it and put it on my social media it's a it's a positive um look for other people to say mm. oh I wonder what she's doing this year and then of course I also I will show you in a minute but let me not 
talk talk ahead of myself. But just to let you know, um, I was diagnosed in 2004. And between 2004 and 2008, um, I was eventually, obviously, in, by 2008, diagnosed with AIDS because I had pneumonia, I had shingles, I had TB meningitis, I had cancer, and I also had two strokes within a four-year period. Um, yeah, in 2005 and 2006, both in January, strangely enough, and I didn't party, I swear, uh, I, was in a, <laughs> I was in a coma for two weeks each time after the stroke. And then in 2018, I had a massive heart attack, uh, resulting in a double bypass. So that is um, what one can look forward to if you are diagnosed HIV positive and do not go onto medication immediately. Um, because when I was diagnosed in 2004, by about 2000 and by about 2006, I think, my GP had said to me, right, you need to go into medication. And I had heard all these bad things and the side effects and what a what a mm. what a stuff about ARVs. So I decided, oh no, I'm not going on that yet because you'd heard, oh, you only need to go on in 10 years time and it only AIDS only starts to develop in in 10 years. You've got you've got a, a waiting period. So I didn't go onto the medication. And I wasn't told by my GP at that time why exactly I should be going onto the medication. I don't think he particularly knew. Um, although I had a very good relationship with him, he was very good thereafter, but pretty much they were clueless those years. Mm. But knowing that what I know now, um, I obviously would have gone on. But on the other hand, it, it was a blessing in disguise because I'm now in a position to say to people, look, this is, this is not what you want to go through. So get onto your medication because that is the result of not starting your me medication timelessly. So that was my stuff in the four year period. And I obviously went on chemotherapy and everything else that went with it. Um, if there are any questions, you're more than welcome to ask me, but, um, You'll see I lost a whole lot of weight. I went on to um, chemo, lost my hair, um, decided to really take it to the next level. And I used to shave my head completely. And as you can see, I used to hand a tattoo on it when I used to go and give presentations. And <laughs> <laughs> the other thing you'll see the tattoo, um, when I came to Cape Town, I actually decided, hey, you know what? Nobody's gonna brand me. If anyone's gonna brand me, it's gonna be me. So from, and to celebrate my 10 year um, uh, anniversary in 2014, I went and put a tattoo on my back and every year the chili came long ago so that's not <laughs> i'm a chili freak and every year that i survive i drop the date underneath that circle and you'll see there in 2018 with a heart attack and then at the very bottom i did the did my november one already this year and then i am a 2020 warrior so i survived 2020 basically so um that is that is the story behind the tattoo and just by being HIV positive doesn't mean you have to give up on living at all. Um, the story that goes with this particular picture is in 2018, I turned, now you're going to know how old I am. No, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> um, I, I turned a certain age and I decided that I, for, my, for my big birthday, I wanted to do a tandem jump. And I'm terrified of heights, just so all of you know that up front. Um, and in uh, 2018, I had my heart attack in March and my birthday was in April, so I couldn't do the jump. So I waited till wo World AIDS Day of the same year in 2018. And I went and did my tandem jump, uh, what, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, nine months after my birthday. So um, don't let nine months be taken away from you. A friend of mine's uh, brother-in-law had a heart attack, also a double bypass, and he just like sat around, couldn't, he got up to get the remote, didn't do the, occasionally did the dishes, didn't do anything else, and he died last year. Wow. My age. Mm. You really Being wanted positive. to ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> should, I, should I make this a competition? Should you guess? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was I was way over when you asked me to guess about the infection, so I'm not going to guess again. <laughs> Maybe I'll offend you. <laughs> no, nah, don't get offended easily. Trust me, not at all. Uh, this is this is just a video that um, uh, I did for Sipla recently, which I'm not going to play you un unless you want me to. It's a three minute uh, video, which was um, done by Sipla for um, related to TB. Um, I can send you that and the attendees, if they're any HR people, they're more than welcome to share that with the staff members. It's just as a, a positive um, take on living um, and and getting through um, HIV and TB. So yeah. I won't show you that yet, unless you want me to go back and do it. I'm, I'm open to do so. Um, what when once I was diagnosed, I also it took me six years to actually disclose my status. As I said earlier, you think um, it's easy to disclose your status. It's not because you are you have that fear of rejection. I I say to people, yeah, I was probably a little bit lucky that I got the cancer, um, so I could actually lie about my HIV status those years. So you know, <laughs> sick and sad and dark, I know, but. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is how I look at it. Um, I decided eventually to speak out because I was I was forced forced into it by um, a, a, a lady that ran a nonprofit organization. The first time I actually spoke out about it was to 250 women um, at a nonprofit fundraiser, and I'm like, oh! And I only spoke for seven minutes, but that was the it was the most terrible seven minutes of my life. But yeah, but it, once it was done, it was done, and the relief I felt. And then of course there was Charlotte Kemp that pushed me to um, put out a website. In 2011, my website went up and I just went big. I just went public. Um, mm. that obviously I, I've informed my family and what have you first. And because of all of that, I have developed personally in leaps and bounds. I can honestly say that from my disclosure, I wrote two books. Um, I've been a TV host, I became an educator, I did radio hosting, um, HIV activist, counseling, I actually took my, I never ever got um, pre or post counseling, I took myself through a counseling course, so um, I could inform myself so that I could put myself out there to help others and that is how, because I realized if I wasn't being offered uh, counseling, what about the other people out there that have less um, access to information so I put myself through there and people came to me via my back end Facebook via WhatsApp etc um, so that is where I put myself and the most important thing of all is I'm a survivor and that is to me the most important part of anything is that people need to know that they can survive and if you if you're going to um, curl up in a corner you are going to die there is there's just no ways there's so much information, so much education, and so much medication that you have no excuse but to be a survivor in this day and age. Mm. Um, then testing and treatment, I'm not going to go uh, through too much of that. There is voluntary counseling and testing, and um, we are encouraged. And the only way to, to empower yourself is to know your HIV status. There, there's, it's, it's easy peasy. Most of the companies do have wellness days. And people need to be encouraged to test. My biggest beef is that management never tests. And that needs to be encouraged more than anything. The uh, blue collars, for want of a better way of putting it, need to see that management is going out there and testing. Even if they tested two months ago, go and test again, just to show mm -hmm. the employees that you care. Um, there are a couple of different tests available out there. ELISA, which is... Um, checks for the antibodies, the rapid test, which also checks, checks for the antibodies, P24 checks for the virus, and the PCR checks for the virus as well. The other thing that is, I'm not sure if it's available in Namibia, but it is available here in South Africa is the home test kit, which I am totally against. Um, yes, in high risk communities like the gay community, it is beneficial, but I don't like the fact that people cannot get the pre and post counseling that should go with that. Yes, they say to mm. me, there is a a, um, a slip, you know, those big pieces of paper in the box. 
that says, if you do test positive, go for counseling. Who reads those? Who reads those inserts? Not me. So I do not, I do not agree with the home test. I'm not for, I'm not for the home test. That's just me, my opinion. Um, if you take a med, you'll stay really healthy. thought about that. I mean, imagine the shock if you do do the yeah. home test. And I mean, you're you there to hold your hand. I mean, absolutely. you already got all the anxiety that goes with yeah. you know, yeah. the fear that maybe you have the virus. And then you go and get it on your own. You're not going to be encouraged to disclose or seek counseling or anything. No, so, no not a chance. Um, yeah. And then you open the door to suicide and all sorts of other related absolutely. things. Absolutely. Yeah, that's my fear, is that mm. suicide thing. Because do you know, I'll say 95% of the people that do come to me, the first thing is they want to kill themselves. Yeah. Okay, it's got a little oh. less over the years, but I mean, I can't tell my parents, I'd rather kill myself. And very suicidal. Yeah, well, if you talk about an least... epidemic, that's one of the things that we're struggling with in Namibia is, um, you know, suicide yeah, one of my that, friends, yeah. one of my friends committed suicide during COVID. Mm, she sure. was my age. Yeah, mm. she had her business, all her eggs in one basket. Um, she had nobody to talk to. Yeah. Well, she felt she had nobody to talk to, and she just ended it. Uh, wow. So, we still don't know your I mean, age. the same goes. The same goes for HIV. Sorry. Sorry. We still don't know your age. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'll get there. Um, <laughs> By being on treatment, you also you'll lower your risk for certain HIV-related cancers. Um, as as you, did I say? Did I mention that I had cancer? Yes, I had cancer. Mm. I had angioimmunoblastic lymphadenopathy, which is a rare form of cancer associated wow. with HIV. It affects all your glands, and I had stage three A. So I was pretty far. As we know, there's only four stages for ca of cancer. So um, the the most known one is scoposi, um, which is the um, skin lesions um, which is quite prevalent and um, yeah you don't want to get cancer if you can avoid it trust me you don't want to go through chemo although my chemo I sailed through for what reason I have no idea but anyway I sailed through my chemo um, my mom had cancer and uh, she did not sail through chemo she... yeah most people don't most people don't I don't know. I, 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 for me, I was probably too, too dumb to know that I was supposed to be sick. <laughs> but taking your meds, you'll lower your chances of developing opportunistic infections like TB, TB meningitis, um, bowel TB. My partner at the time had bowel TB um, when he infected me, knowingly infected me people. So, um, yeah, you. there are various types of cancer, oh, sorry, TB. Um, you even get TB in the knees. So think about that. You can mm. reduce the odds of transmitting HIV to anybody if you are on treatment um, and you'll get access to other services like in my case, to TB services, to um, um, heart services. They come cut your heart open, whoosh, splat you open, you get the services. So um, just some of the lifestyle management. So I'm not going to go through all of them. I, if you want me to um, send a, a PDF copy, I'm, I'm more than willing to do so. Uh, you can have exquisite it. You can begin to heal if you take ownership, live in the present, build a strong foundation for your future, assemble a so support network, and you will achieve a balance in your life if you manage your HIV status correctly. Um, there's a, a few more things that I, I, I won't delve into too much. Um, and as I say, I don't want to keep everybody and bore them at the end of the year like this. So yeah. I will, as I say, um, then this, this is what I wanted to get to. Managing HIV and AIDS in the workplace. There should be an AIDS policy statement in place in every, every company. It is mm. a legal requirement. I'll just pop into a few here. Employers may not discriminate against HIV positive people. No person may unfairly be discriminated against. Um, whether it comes to recruitment, appointment, um, financial situation, employees, one of the big things I always get asked, can employees, uh, employers ask me to be tested? The fact of the matter is no. However, when it is... Um, in a work environment where there is 
machinery, etc. You can be asked to do so, but it, you can decline. But if you want the job, take the test. And then the most important thing of all, know your status. You cannot move forward if you do not know what your status is. You cannot live, you cannot work, you can be an asset to the community if you know your status. Why not know it? It's just so simple. Know your status. And then we have, this is where you can ask me how old I am, and I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to make a guess. <laughs> I see, and I can't pronounce your name, Noguki. Huh? Would you like to take a flyer there? Ellen, any ideas? Come on, don't be scared. I just want to prove a point. I'm, I'm scared to guess. Uh, Go on, don't be scared. I, 60. 62. 62. So basically, I, yeah. basically so I am a pensioner. Uh -huh. But the fact <laughs> is, I still live. And, exactly. and that is my point. It doesn't matter whether you're 24, 42, 62, you can still live a full life yeah. with HIV. There's yes, I have been. Lifa. Yes. And Lifa says, with the encouragement of getting managers to test employees for uh, HIV and offering support, would it be wise to create policies where HR practitioners are trained in counseling, or should this be something of an outsourced business? I think HR should be trained in counseling because they are there for the love of the people and you are the trusted person. However, some people do feel more comfortable talking to somebody outside the workplace. Yeah. And that I found was one of the other companies I spoke to the other day. Um, they outsource the um, counseling and so on. But um, having said that again, people like to talk to somebody that is also HIV positive. So, yeah. because they feel that connection to mm. somebody that, sure, somebody that, that knows what, what I'm going through, what I feel. So, but I do believe that HR managers should um, be skilled in um, counseling in general, basic, not just for basic HIV. Counseling, yeah. Basic counseling, yeah. 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 So there's an well, interesting be point that, that, that Leifa raises. I mean, if somebody is suicidal, for example, and you go to somebody who's trained in payroll and HR administration, and next minute you have to deal with somebody who's suicidal, it might be best to, uh, well, at least refer, you know, have an That's open source, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very definitely then, when it comes to, as, as when it's gone as far as that, yes. Yeah. You know, I remember a while back earlier in my career, we actually had a retainer with a client um, where we, we had a resident psychologist sort of, you know, on a weekly basis, um, you know, kind of go to the company and have, you know, an hour or morning sessions where people could go and see them. Um, but it's, it's a, I know you don't like to say the word stigma. Unfortunately, <laughs> that stigma is, you know, uh, is something that's really hard to break down, you know, the, the, the labeling, um, I'm encouraged that you managed to, you know, uh, stamp yourself <laughs> and label yourself, um, you know, if anybody's going to do it, um, you know, but I, I myself, I, I struggle with, with mental illness, um, or I have, you know, but you've got, you've got medicine and you treat it and, you know, um, take ownership of it. Exactly, you know, and, and it's like you say, if you don't know what your status is, um, yeah. you know, you, you, you can't manage it, um, you know, and you, and you can't deal with, with the, the outcome. Uh, we have a, now I'm taking over your presentation, but um, we have a short stress management intervention that we often do with our clients. And, um, and one of the things that we ask people is, what is it that you're stressing about? Yeah, you know, because we have this generalized anxiety disorder almost going on, um, you know, and and again with COVID, I think everything has been highlighted. But 
you know, what are you stressing about? Are you stressing about being reckless with not wearing your mask? You know, yeah. are you stressing about maybe losing your job? Are you stressing about not being able to pay your bills? You yeah. know, and once you once you've identified yeah. the stress, the source of stress, stress, then you can deal with it. Because yeah, if you're sure. stressed about catching the virus, uh, COVID now or HIV, you know, then limit your risk behavior. You know, Absolutely. wear your mask or wear protection when you're having sexual intercourse. Um, you know, if your stress is about losing your job, you know, call HR and ask them, yeah. you know, start we with this, you know, um, you know, or, or whatever. So I think, you know, identifying, like you said, knowing your status, whether it's me mental health, HIV, um, you know, or any other infectious disease, um, you know, that's the first step to taking control. Um, and, and I think, again, you know, relating it back to COVID, the, the uncertainty of this whole situation is the thing that drives people mental. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. We don't know what's going on. And it's the same with HIV. I mean, I've, just today, I'm, I'm you know, uh, what's the, the word that they say? My mind is blown, um, you know, by, by all the information that you shared because um, I never knew that it was, you know, what did you say, undetected, you know, then you can't transmit, <laughs> you know, um, it's, it's the, the advances that we've done in medicine, yeah. AIDS research and all that, um, yeah. people are so um, uninformed, I think that's yeah. the whole thing, you know, it starts yeah. with education, we said this before we started with the call and the recording, you know, it's, people aren't educated, we don't know. Um, and, 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 and it's not that difficult if we see all of us are now like, you know, semi-virologists, specialists, you know, after COVID, the information is there. You just need to look for it, um, you know, or reach out to someone like yourself um, to get that information. Oh, I went out to dinner last night with, with three of my friends and um, they should be more educated. And they themselves, we were talking about this and they themselves said, they need people to be out there to talk about this. People that are actually living with the virus that can talk about it. Uh, I mean, and I was actually quite taken aback because I thought they were more educated on the topic because um, one of them said, and she's a school teacher, said to me, she doesn't know the difference between HIV and AIDS. Wow. And that I find horrifying because she's dealing with school kids. Yeah. And what if they just, if they've got a relationship with the teacher and the teacher can't explain this to them? Okay, she's a maths teacher, but that's not the point. Um, <laughs> it just, it's an educator. What if they have that, that connection with their teacher, their educator, and they can't speak to them about it because the educator is clueless. Mm. And, and this is, this is the, the, one of the biggest problems is, is that it's not being educated in the schools. They're not, yeah. the schools do not use um, or, or, or educate to that degree on lifestyle skills. I mean, I, um, which most people don't know about this, I keep that quite quiet. I um, volunteer with, a, with a, a, a Life Matters institution that's a nonprofit organization that goes, this is the only way I can get into the schools. They go into the schools and do lifestyle training, uh, life skills training. And sure. that is the only way I can get into the schools. And, and I don't always get a big opportunity to talk about HIV, but when I do, I get my little bit in. And that's, and that's unacceptable um, because this is the age, the grade sixes and sevens is who we're talking to. And um, it's unacceptable that we are not talking about sexual actions. And, and the repercussions thereof, be it pregnancy, be it STIs, be it HIV, whatever. Um, it's not being spoken about in the schools. And that is where we need to go. Yes, all the um, corporates and what have you, have got all the year end functions on World AIDS Day happening. And um, yeah, they do their duty and they tell their employees, but those employees do not take that information back home to their children. So we, we're educating up here, but we're not educating here where they are newly exposed to sexual interactions. So yeah, I, can get very, I can get very fluffy about this. By the time you get to the corporate environment, it's too late almost. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, wow. Because you know, they've, kids have got Teflon. They're made of Teflon. They think they're made of Teflon. <laughs> yeah. You see exactly. what happened with the rage in Belito now as well, the party. I mean, how many kids are, are infected with COVID from there? They think yeah. they're Teflon. 
No, well, the insurance companies have known that for years. So your your insurance policies and stuff are a lot more expensive when you're young. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Young. I mean, I mean, I've even tried to get into the insurance companies to speak to their clients because they must have massive corporates where we can speak. Mm, yeah. No go. No go. Yeah. I have to. Well, Cindy, we're almost uh, 11 o'clock. I want to thank you um, officially for joining us today um, and for having a nice chat with us and raising awareness. Like I said, we could probably go on for quite a while talking yeah. about all the all the things that we can do and how we can intervene as HR. Um, I would like to just maybe open it up for questions if there's any questions for two or three minutes. Um, if there's nothing, then uh, then we wish you a, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and, <laughs> and all yeah. that. Um, COVID, yeah. Zelda, Lipa, Alina, any questions? Nothing. Thank you. Yeah, okay, they're, mo they're more than welcome. Thank you very much for having me. And anybody's more than welcome to contact me if they want to ask me any questions. And if you want the, if you want the, on the, on the chat section there, and Guki says she guessed that you were about forty-seven. <laughs> no more than fifty. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I act. I don't act my age, but anyway. <laughs> Well, I've never seen a. When did you say 62? Or, uh, 62. Out of an airplane. So that must have been when you were 60. Of course, you said it was 60. a big birthday, yes. Yeah. When you were 60, jumping out of a plane. Um, I, I think I, I need to wait a couple of more years before I'll get the courage to jump out of a plane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I have to find something new for, the, for, the, for next year, something mm -hmm. else wild. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Cindy. Um, Thank you very much for having me. And I hope we can maybe uh, see you in person one day in Namibia. Yeah, hopefully. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye. There we go.